And uh, if you recall, when last time I did uh, the paramecium, I ran out of uh, battery, right? So I took me a picture of paramecium. Now let me show you. Okay, it's, it's doing it. Okay. I just clicked on that. I'll show you. Because MGI is on this flash drive. When I click on it, it will automatically assess that program. And this is what I like about it. I can make it smaller. I can make it bigger. And I can move it around to go get it. So I can see that it's got little cilia. See that paramecium, all the little hair sticking out? Now, if I take it back down smaller, I, I want to see how big this circle is. Okay? Now, we figured that this thing is about, about 450 all the way across, did we not? Mm -hmm. And we figured he's about halfway, which would be about 225. Mm -hmm. Well, this paramecium is not 225, but he ain't too far from it, is he? I may be guessing 200. And y'all, y'all, y'all were just like 187. I, I, I took that, but this, this program is, is just and now you couldn't send that to somebody because the sucker's too big. Let me show you what I'm talking about being too big. If I hover over it, that thing is. Yeah. That's a huge file. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to send it to you, what I got to do first. I bring it up and I come to image resize and I click that it doesn't work now I can send that to you because that's only 800 by 600 the 4,000 by 3,000 it's going to come back and say file too big so this is the one I use MGI plus and and, um, and you can um, you can make it brighter or if you don't like that hit control Z puts it back where you were now, when I get it here, I usually take this file, and if I want to do it more, open it my photos, my Photoshop file, my high dollar file. A lot of times, that's enough right there. And um, you can crop it and take just this much and use just that. I mean, it's a really, it's a really nice program. And if you have a flash drive and with you now, I don't mind giving it to you. Um, because when I, I changed computers and bought me a computer, I went looking. I like it so much. Um, I sat down there yesterday and I, and I took a picture. This thing right here, that's it 400 times. Now, now look how big he is now. Now, do you agree that this thing does not cover the whole field of view? Yes. You agree? Now, look right here. How do you reckon I got that picture? Uh, yeah. Obviously, that's a much bigger magnification. Because, you know, he's roughly twice his size. Mm -hmm. Actually, a little more. And I can still see a little bit of the um, hair coming off of it. So. But what I did, um, I took a picture of bacteria. And there is absolutely nothing outstanding about bacteria. This one shows a round one. This is kind of raw shape. If you can't, if you go back and forth, you'll see this is like a corkscrew. I see some of the turns right there. I had to move up and down through it to see the full extent of the turn. When you take a picture, you take at, at this one level. Now. My camera has got, has got motion picture, but I had to hold the thing, and, if you, and you know, you turn it, it goes off. I bought me a device this then I can attach the device to the scope, attach the camera to that device, and then I can turn it. I'm going to try that next. But bacteria, this is bacteria, and like I said, there's nothing to shake a stick at. And I took another picture of it. Is that like a universal? For camera or yeah, yeah. I wanted one that was is not for my Canon. It's just universal, and um, I even had to do a little bit to it to make it work because the you know the, the scope, the base, it would not sit there. So I took some Velcro, I put inside this device, 
Now I screw it down and it don't bend when it clamps. I haven't tried it yet though. But I'm going to try it sometime. Actually, it's not here. Now there's another picture. Got a little color in here, a little refraction going on. Um, but that is still bacteria. And there's just nothing outstanding about bacteria. Except it'll get you sick of the dog. Now I took another picture just trying different different moods. And of course that's so I want, I want I want a good firm perimeter. This is my field of vision. Now this thing, he's on high power. And if this represents about 225, they're not very big. Obviously, they're not very big at all. Okay, then I went and got another picture. And now these have been stained. These are gram stains. And you see a, a, another mass here, the mass there. But, Crystal uh, violet? Huh? Crystal violet? Mm -hmm. Alright, so that's just more bacteria. Then I came, and I just want, and this thing here was a, a piece of bacteria inside tissue. And you see a little dark area there. I didn't particularly like that slide. I want to see if I could get a picture of it. And the picture came out, and I'm satisfied with the picture. It's good that I find it in your lab book. Another picture of there. On my camera, as I change it, it would go automatic. The flower, I like the flower symbol. Because the flower symbol means macro, and I want that. But sometimes it won't stay there. And so I, I take a few pictures of the one I like the best. This one is a piece of um, algae. And you can see how, how filamentous it is. That's, that's about like a looking slide. I'm just taking pictures just for the heck of it. Now this is first time, this is a piece of lichen. That is a, almost like a twig, but now this is under scanning. It's just scanning, and we figure scanning is about oh, four, four, four point something across. So that's a pretty long thing. But you can't see details yet. I want to see what it looks like inside here. So I, so I, I took a few more pictures trying to get my, my very best exposure. And I don't think that's good because I don't see the, the the detail. So I'm going to delete that right now and get it out of my hair. And then I'll take a look at this one. And I'll refer back to the one I, that I used first. I think I see more stuff here right. than I do in this one. So when I select the picture I like, I'm going back and forth, and I'm going to delete that. Now I want to compare this one to the one I like. I, I might like him better. And this one comes up. Now that now that's a higher mag. The, the, now I've just lost. See here's scanning. And if you look, that's that's about as thick as this thing here is. It's a knot. So they're scanning, and I, was, I just realized that when I looked at this one, I have blown it up. Is that now not thicker than this? So I know this is past scanning. I wouldn't have known that it had anything to compare it back to. But now, this this strip of lichen actually is now broader in my beam, so I know this is the, the 400 meg, mag. Okay? So, I, so I'm going to have him for my for my scanning, which is 40. Now I got these two, which are the ones that it looks to be like they're at the 400 bag. Now I want to compare it. I want, this is the one I, I saw earlier. And in a minute, we'll see if I like the other one better. Can you see more detail? Yeah, that one has more detail. And then you look back at the other one. Yeah. So I can clearly see and to show you this. And I always want the very best picture. So if I slide him across and I slide him across, you can clearly see the winner, right? Sometimes you go back and forth and when one of them's gone, you go, I can't remember how it looked. 
I'll put both on the screen at the same time. And now I know that's a much better picture right there. So I'm going to to get rid of that one. Gotta make sure I don't erase the wrong one. Okay, that's the good one. And that's the bad one. Now, 40, 100, what do you reckon this is? Okay, this, is this is big. Okay, can you now see a little more detail? Let, now, now, let me look and see if the other one is any better. I gotta, I gotta bring it up here. Sing better than the other one. I like this one better. I see more. This will look like gray spaghetti. Just lay it out there. And these round things are is the other half. See, this is not one organism. This is a <laughs> this is a thing. That's made of two organisms living together. And as long as they're together, they'll, they'll die apart. But as long as they're together, that, that, that lichen is the most unusual thing because there's no roots. And what he needs, this red stuff provides. And what the red stuff needs, he provides. And they can grow inside of glass. And a matter of fact, you know Mount Rushmore? With the present faces is a constant battle. So these things grew on there, and when you had the nice sharp lines, now they're getting duller and duller because this, this they, these lichens they erode erode rock. They turn it to soil. Well, you don't want to erode a statue, do you? They will. So right now they're they're constant maintenance teams, and all they, they all they do for a living is hang off those ropes and clean this lichen off of those, those presidential faces at Mount Rushmore. I've also heard that Mount Rushmore, behind it is a huge, huge cave, and they have buried treasures in there. That'd be good for most picture, though. I ain't sure that's right. I do know that as far as looking at the pictures of presidents, the lichen is the enemy. It's breaking it down fast as you get there. All right, now, so, you can see some right there. Let me go ahead and get him out of the way. Make, make the nice one bigger. The beauty of this thing is I can make it appear like a higher magnification just because I blow the picture up. Can you now see really what the detail really is? See all these like the earthworms? See all the red things? Well, the red things is one kind of organism and this is the other kind of organism. And these always live on top. This always lives on the bottom. And when you know what they're doing, it'll make perfect sense why that arrangement is. And right now, you don't know. And if I make it any bigger, what I like to do, if I get a real sharp picture, I can blow it up like I have a, like a high-power microscope in there. Now, the picture is already blurry. I blow it up. It's going to be as blurrier. But that's why that I'm very pleased with the picture because it's, it didn't lose much of its oomph even when I'm artificially magnified. Okay. Is this this is a plant? Mm -hmm. oh, it's it is a yeah. thing. <laughs> it's it's not a plant. It's not a fungus. It's not an allergy. It's not a bat. It's made of two. You know, you had the five kingdoms, right? One of those is a member of one of the kingdoms. And the other one is a member of another kingdom. So you don't put lichen in a kingdom. You say that lichen is made of two organisms. One is a, and the other is a. 
and together they produce this thing which actually can take a rock face and turn it to dirt. Not overnight. Okay. Now, take a picture of the, um, the paramecium just see what I had. I should have got that right there. But there are a variety of colors of these things. And this is one I want to kind of see is how big it was compared to that pointer. That pointer we know that is, is that back down. That's the high, but do you see the little hair? That's how he swims. And now this is no longer this ain't 400, buddy. And if I artificially magnify it, right here is where, where his mouth is. He crawls along, food goes in here. And what you see, these fine hair-like things, there's, there's paddles. That's how he moves around. They, they, they just bump in something, go somewhere like the toy did, okay? And I took a picture of one to, I want to, that slide I had, it said, um, doggone it, battery died. I'm going to put this in that slideshow. I, and this shows you that he, um, he's not quite 225 microns, because this thing is 225. So I'm guessing he's like about 200. And like I, love it, like I told y'all, when you're doing your guesses and you guess 187, I let it go. If you didn't guess 125, I'd have docked it. It ain't that short. It ain't no way it's that short. But um, I went online and said that on the average, they're about 250. I'm not sure I agree with that, though. Because 250 would put them out here somewhere, wouldn't it? And, and I looked all over, all those, and none of them were that big. I didn't find me a short one. They're all about this size right here. And this is another one where I want you to see that they're all about the same size. No. Now I would say he's about 210. If I swing him around though, he's going to be short. Mm -hmm. if I, if I, luckily, I didn't do it, but I can take and swing that ring around mm -hmm. so he lines up more. But still, he's not 225, though, is no. he? So maybe, maybe he might be a 210. Now, do you look like he is shorter than this one? Yeah, the one on top is shorter. You would think that. Mm -hmm. um, insert a line. If I drew a line right here. No, I want, I want a line. What if I make it draw? Well, I want a line. Something weird. It does. It does the box. Well, what did the box say? That's about the length, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly, I can put this one inside that one, can I? So, so this one is a short. That yeah, might be 190. But some folks don't like that arrow. I kind of do, because I don't often use it to point to things. I use it as a measurement of how big something is. I know what he is and so forth. If this thing is 225 and he's a little shorter, I don't know about what he is also. Okay? Do you have any of these specimens alive? Mm -hmm. Oh, you can dare outside in the water? <laughs> I want to go home and I think sometimes I, I got a bird bath outside just for the water again. And the, and the algae growing in it, and I used to scrub it clean. I thought, wait, that, that's a good specimen source. So I got my little homemade thing at home. I think I might go home at night and go out there and make a wife get it for me. <laughs> but give me a little dropper of that and put it on a slide and under my, and you see him crawling around. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if he's that big, you'll be able to see him, even on my little scope. Yeah. Um, this thing here, I, I took a picture of. This is human blood. And if this might be my best endeavor. But if you look carefully, they're hollow. Thick rim, kind of like chewy. 
But, but these, these two have the center. That right there, it ain't white, but that's a white blood cell. The nucleus stains that color. If you look, you'll find pieces of them. That's a plate that's right there. That's what makes you blood clot if you get cut. The plate. But these are your red blood cells. And like I said, that area in there, it's, it's not hollow like a donut. But it's really thin though. It, it's very really thin. You couldn't go through there if you were swimming. But this is um, this is us. And then I'm, and I want to get a frog. This might be. A, I think this is my better picture. Mm -hmm. well, I'm not sure that they both look about. Well, I, I, it might be a toss up to two slides. But the frog now. I want to show you the frog picture. Matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna minimize. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this down, and slide this across, and I'm gonna put a frog beside it. You're gonna see a major, major, major difference. Here's the frog. Let me take it down. Mm -hmm. Across here. Mm -hmm. Slide it across. Make it a little bigger. They have a nucleus in there. They got the nucleus. Yeah, the nucleus, and we do not have the nucleus. So, if you see this kind of blood cell, like in, in like in an amphibian, they have the nuclei. We do not. Um, the reason we have no nucleus is because who who is bigger, me or a frog? You know that. Who probably has a greater demand for oxygen, me or a frog? Me. Uh, nuclei, they are an oxygen glutton. They love to eat oxygen. Well, since I have a great demand for oxygen, the good Lord decided to take my blood cells and remove the oxygen eater from my blood cells. If I had a nucleus, by the time I got to my, my tissues, where's the oxygen? No. It's been eaten. And I would die from some problem. So that's also why these do not reproduce themselves. If you don't have the nucleus, you can't do you can't do mitosis. Now I don't know a lot about the frog blood, but I do know one thing: the nucleus inside there indicates that they isn't, he doesn't have the demand that we have, or it'd be gone. But, but there's no doubt that there's a difference in these blood types, in these, in these blood categories. And the presence of a nucleus indicates that he doesn't have the man that we have. If he did, they'd be gone. Can they replicate blood cells? Uh, no, the bones still do it for him too. I, I'm saying, I, I don't know. I know I, they might be able to produce. I, I don't know. I know ours can't cause a nucleus. It almost looks like If, if these could, I would not be surprised. Oh, what are you saying, Rocky? No, I mean, it just looks, some of them looks like they're re reproducing the nucleus, like, like they're splitting off. Like that to the far left, though. You mean that one? No, like there's some other ones that look like oh, they're right there. Yeah, kind of branching off each other or something. Yeah, like the double one. You think they're dividing? Yeah, that's what that looks like. You think they're dividing or just squashed together? No. Yeah, that's a good point though. That could be the end of mitosis. If that my if that's mitosis, that would prove that these things now there's a white blood cell right there. But I'm I'm looking for like 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 metaphase. I'm looking for a phase of mitosis. So I, I don't I, my right, question is look on this side closer yeah, to you. The oh, right the side. Let me make it big. The right side showed more what oh, I, like oh closer to up. you. I go up. Now there's another, but I, I mean, I'm trying to figure out is that two nuclei in one cell? See, now that's two that's cells. That's just two cells. It's two cells. Right here's two cells. This looks like a cell right there. Well, I would say right here that these are not, they're not multiplying. And I don't know, I guess that, and, you know, 
frogs are birds like we're vertebrates. And our bones make our blood, so I reckon his bones make his blood too. Are they, um, but you said that they're uh, cold blooded, right? Yeah. Okay, would that have to do with the difference? Oh, that? yeah. If you're cold blooded, you have a lot slower metabolism. You don't have the demand. I mean, right now, out there in, in our pond where I hunt, there's frogs buried in the mud, underwater, not drowning. And what happens, they don't have a high demand for oxygen, and their skin can absorb oxygen like the fish's gills can. And as long as he stays quiet and doesn't move a whole lot, he'll survive like that. Now, when the water warms up and his metabolism warms up, he starts to perish. He swims in the surface and starts breathing. Okay. What is that stuff on their skin that's supposed to help protect them? Is but that it slime? Yeah. Well, fish have it too. I mean, my goldfish in there, you're not supposed to handle it because it, that slime protects that dirt. Well, you know the things in the water crawling on the ground? Well, that, that fish is food to them. But the slime that's on the fish protects them from infection. Exactly right. And if you handle a fish too much and you rub it off, that's why they say if you catch and release, just get it by the mouth. Don't hold him by his body, by his mouth only. Because the mouth, because of the nature, it, 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 it replenishes that, that mucus a lot faster than his side does. I mean, I, I watch Bill Dance catch fish on TV. He hold about, but he'll point, but he don't rub. Because they all know that you start rubbing off, the next thing you know, you catch fish again. And there's a sore inside where something got through. And um, if you go on the internet, you'll see, you'll just, let's do it. And you see what's in this pond water. Oh, I want to show another thing. Anyone care to guess what this thing here is? This part of the fish scale. is one of the scales. It's a fish scale. Now, but now if I now if I blow it up higher, look at the detail. Mm. That that to me is just it's it, almost like a thumbprint, like a fingerprint. It does like where well, your fingerprint curls or swirls. But remember the claw? Huh? Remember the claws. <laughs> <laughs> the rose from the dog cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be the hand of a creature, could you? Mm -hmm. But now it's also now, now think about this now. Now, you don't know what power that is, though. You don't know this, if this is high power, you know this is like roughly 225. If that is low power, that bad boy is like almost 2,000. And that's why when you see things on, on books, they'll say 40x, 50x. Because when you first start, you just see a pretty picture. And then you wonder, what, 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 what magnification is it? Because you start understanding that. I mean, I didn't write down over here what it was. Because actually, I forgot. But I tell you, when I look at that slide, I can see both of them. I, and there, there's agreement over here. And this thing goes this way. I'd say it's low magnitude. I think it's scanning. I think it's scanning. Yeah, because they're not big. They're kind of big. I just sat down that one and just started looking at them. And they're, they're, they're so fun. Now, I've also went in there, I haven't seen but the mouth parts of the fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to look at that one. They also got a, the, <laughs> the leg of a honeybee. Oh. I had that big old pollen. I want to look at that one too. Uh, these scopes in here are much better than I've ever seen before. When I was in high school, we had, and I like these, but, so I didn't much care for them. If I had those scopes, I might have been in my hair, microbiologist, of those scopes. And the little one I bought, my little, my little cheapy, I mean, I didn't take, it'll take pictures almost as good as blowing my mind. If I can get enough light going into it, I can make it the resolution pretty. But now, I took these through what I call not my there the scope in there's got the two the two oculars and it kind of slants more. My favorite one I gotta get on top of. The one I'm using now I just kinda do like this. 
And I, I actually, I'm changing my favor to that one. So I'm gonna take pictures, I'm gonna use that one. I just use one of the sides of it. One side has the needle, the other side does not. But I, I'm, going to, I'm going to adopt that one as my favorite scope. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. My favorite scope would never have done that. That's why I was surprised when the other one did. So the, what I'm using now might be a higher dollar scope. I know it's one of my newer ones. But I always thought my single barrel scope was nice. Single barrel scope won't take that picture. I've tried. And, um, but that double bar that double barrel scope. Oh, I like that thing. I don't know why it costs them. I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind buying me one for the house, but I have my peers I come why I spend two thousand bucks. I come here and look and y'all could too from any week. But there's some folks and all they do is just microscopes. They just, and they they just fool around and they discover things. Now I'm gonna show you um, like I said, right here is what you're going to see inside there today. Even, and it is, it's pretty cool. Because all these little gray stringy like structures, that's one half of this thing. And I artificially magnify it. I love that. With this program. I can't do other, other programs than this one. And these little reddish looking things are staining red. That's the other half of this thing. And as long as they're together, this thing can grow anywhere. You separate them, then they'll miss each other. Now, there are some like this that can survive by themselves, but the members of a lichen are so, it's like me losing my wife, I depend on her. Before her, I lived by myself, but now I've modified my one day I told her, I hope I die first. She got mad at me. I'm saying, I don't want to live without you. She goes, well, I don't want to live without you. I said, well, I'll be selfish. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to bury my wife and be killed. And she feels the same way about me. Now, I want to show you um, these two things I, I, I went and got. This is what's on Angel right now. And, and I'm not going to do anything more than show it to you. Uh, this is it's just a handout. I thought I changed it to a worksheet. I said no. Um, I finally got. I got wanted it. You know, I used to be yellow yesterday. Well, I got. Like I wanted it. Um, and our title is Five Kingdoms of Life, or it's six. Because right now they're pushing six. Um, here's the standard five kingdom breakdown that um, I grew up knowing about. This one was all your prokaryotes. If you do not have, no, no. If you cannot see a nucleus because there's no membranes, you're prokaryote. Oh, you got a DNA. You got all that stuff. It's not in a bag called a nucleus. All the rest of them, they're eukaryotes. So just this one is a prokaryote, and this would be your oldest kingdom because. He's the most simple. Now, these are single cell, but these are single cell too. But these are, but these, they're eukaryotes. They have a nucleus. So, and some of these can make, well, I make, some of these can make their own food too. Some of these can make their own food. There's one in here that's even, it's been misnamed. Um, it, it's called blue-green algae. It ain't algae at all. It's, just, it's called, it's really cyanobacteria. Cy, 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 what color is cyan? Blue. Blue. Well, if you, if you ever look at a picture of Yellowstone Park and you look at those hot springs, there's an aqua color. Those hot springs are about 95, I mean, they're, they're hot. You could live there. But all that, all that blue, that's that cyanobacteria living there and not dying in it. And cyanobacteria are famous. They can live places you would never expect to find something living. The Salt Lake. Nothing lives there except cyanobacteria. You don't find no fish living there. You don't find no bass. Now, pro now protists basically are plant-like things. But if the thing you're looking at has animal-like traits, we call it a protozoan, like zoo. 
So if your single cell eukaryote is green and can make its own food, we call it a protistin. If it is not green, it's single cell, cannot make its own food, crawls around like a little worm, we call it a protozoan. Now these here, I used to wonder why they put this one before this one. Because these can make their own food and these cannot make their own food. And the reason is, neither of these can make their own food. So why would you want to have fungi plant in America? I guess as far as complexity, I would have said MP fungi then different than this one. But all, all plants, all plants, without exception, can make their own food. All of them don't have leaves though. The thing called a moss, like the green carpet, no leaves. But that's a plant. Um, fungi, well, I think of mushrooms. Because mushrooms are fungus. And, um, but yeast, even the, the dreaded yeast infection, that's still like fungus. Um, of course, animals, Oh man, they're 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 about a million kinds of animals. And every time we go somewhere to explore, we find a few more. We didn't know we had four. We had got a name on. Um, now, if I want to divide him into smaller groups, I divide them into phyla. Now, we don't. I don't know why, but when we do plants, we don't use phyla. We use divisions. Kingdoms are divided into divisions of plants. But in everything else, we divide the, the, the kingdoms into phyla. I don't know who started that. I, I think let's do phyla for all of them. But you have the, the gymnosperm division, the angiosperm division. Actually, in my mind, it's the same as a phyla. Um, I gave you, you're going to need some of these examples to fill out my chart. So this is your Monerans. Some say this is a Monera, and I say Monera like an Alaskan, it's from Alaska, all right? They're about, and, and I ain't gonna say 9,995, they're about 10,000 kinds of these. That's a lot though. Um, some are, now if you're auto, you can make your own food, right? I, I threw in words in here to help you understand that some Monerans can make their own food, and we call those autotrophs, but most of them cannot. And if you gotta eat, other, hetero means other than your other eater. So you eat, you know, a bacteria gets in you and makes you sick. He's eating, he's eating your tissues. If he makes his own food, would he give you disease? He don't need you. He doesn't need you. It's the ones that don't make their own food that need you for your food and they give you diseases. Okay? Now, I said, now there's a cyanobacteria, which is also called, I don't like them called this, because algae actually belong right here. And when I say blue-green algae, that's just a trip. They're not algae. Because they're prokaryotes. To be an algae, you must be a eukaryote. Now, see right now though, we got, we got some over there, and they look like green algae. But you look inside, the nucleus is it's just green. And you look at a, a real algae, there's a nucleus inside. So when you look at these, I know why. They do look like bluish green colored algae. And they'll go try to find that nucleus. It doesn't have one. And that's why we cannot really call these algae in my mind because to be an, al to be an alga, you could have a nucleus. So this term right here was laid on to them, and I think it should have been laid on ever. Probably got laid on before we realized they had a the nucleus. So now we call them cyanobacteria. And this means bluish bacteria. This part tells you prokaryotes. This part tells you can make his own food. So this one wouldn't harm you. These are the ones that, because you or your, their food source, they harm you. 
These won't harm you because they don't need you. They make their own food. Now, the next four on here, and I kept them in order that that my chart did. I couldn't mix them up, but protista. Now, it's also called prot. It's called protoctista. I never used protoctista. I don't know why we even thought of it before, but I do know when you see this, don't think that is another thing. That's another word for a, a, a protozoan. All right. Now. Just like Monera, these bad boys are single cell. So they're all microscope stuff. You don't see one for your eye. But the difference is the organization, they have a nucleus. And that's why they're placed in Protista. No nucleus, we put in Monera then. That's how we do. We just look at it. If he's single cell and you got a nucleus, he's, a, he's in Protista. If he's single cell and no nucleus, Monera. It's just that basically simple. Um, these are all eukaryotes. They're all eukaryotes because they have a nucleus and they have other things. There's the other things also. Um, most of them can move. We call that being motile. If you can move like from across the room, from A to B, we say you're motile. Can a tree move? No. Yes, it can. Leaves can move. If you put a pot by your window, all those leaves for long are facing your window. Spin that sucker around, not even face inside your house. Come back in a couple of days. Guess what's happened? They're all pointing back to the window again. And they wouldn't move that pot. But now, can they walk from your kitchen to your dining room? No. <laughs> That's what you mean by being, they can't move. They can't move. Now, a Venus, a Venus flytrap. Can it move to get a fly? So I know he can move, but he can't chase that fly around the house again. You got to lure it to him. I'm um, about that. You can buy those all over the place. And what I used to do, Hardaway, you can't catch a fly. You know, hamburger meat is about the size of, is about the size of a fly, and just chuck it in there, and it gonna snap. It just goes slowly closes on that meat. It, it's not like a rat trap where it just bam, you know, like 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 a bear trap. It closes. It be closed for a long time too. And when it opens, green and green, that meat's gone. And what the, the what the thing is doing? All plants need the carbon and the oxygen and the hydrogen. They also need nitrogen to make, to make their amino acids. Well, the nitrogen comes in from the roots. The problem is, though, there's nitrogen in the air out here, too. But they can't use that. In those roots are living bacteria, and they're called nitrogen-fixing bacteria. What they do is take the atmospheric nitrogen and they add it to sulfur. That's how they fix the nitrogen. And then that moves into the root. And that goes up to the leaf. So when the leaf is making his sugars, he's also making nucleic acids. They have nitrogen. Then he's making proteins and nitrogen. So without these nitrogen fixing bacteria, and I was one of my slides had a, a root nodule. And I know what happens inside that nodule is where these bacteria are living, which is not hurting that root, actually helping that plant live. That's we call that symbiosis. I mean if you help me and I help you, and we're both good. That's called symbiosis. What's it called when I live on you and I hurt you? Parasite. That's parasitism. Parasitism. That's the nitrogen cycle which is talking about, right? Okay. And I just listed, I mean, uh, amoeba, the all kinds of ways you can spell amoeba. With E on back, I'm saying four or five of them. If I take the E off, I'm just saying one. Euglena. Euglena is paramecium, paramecia. Volvox is, you saw that big old round ball, right? Yes. Yeah. The things inside it. Volvox is just a colony. 
and the little round things are the critters living in the in the colony. Um, algae diet diatoms are man, they they're real pretty. Um, Protista. Now, if you're unicellular and you're kind of animal-like because you can move around, then we say let's call you a protozoan. You're still in Protista protozoan. Now, some of them are big. Did you know seaweed is an algae? A big algae. A seaweed, if you look at one cell of a seaweed, it's like one of the cell of a euglena. It's just that seaweeds, they are multicellular. You ever hear a red tide? And that kills fish? That's algae. That's red algae. And they make a toxin and the fact that they're red and you can, there are pictures flying over a beach and you see a red area in the water, like somebody stained it. Nothing living there because toxin produces. If you have too much red tide, then you put your fishing up. Alright? Macro means I don't need a scope. I am macro. My fingerprints are macro. So a scope would help see them, wouldn't it? Okay? Plantae, and that's what you say plant, plantae. Um, these are all your plants. There are about a quarter million of them that we know of right now. Okay? There might be others that we have not discovered. I, I'm sure there are. Most of our medicines come from plants. And most come, and we always worried about if you destroy the rainforest, you might be destroying some fantastic cure for cancer that we've not discovered yet. So when you burn the rainforest to make room for planting new crops, we often wonder, man, what are you, what are you killing? That maybe nothing, and maybe you, you raise something that we could use. Um, all plants are multicellular. None of them need a scope to see. They're all autotrophs because they all make their own food. That's why. It means right there to make your own food. Um, they're all large, they're macro. They're all eukaryotes, so they all have a nucleus. They have cell walls. Up here, what's that, did I see it? These have cell walls, they have cell walls too. I'm gonna need to add that to my thing. Yeah, I'm gonna add this to my, You know, for the longest time, they even put fungi in the plant kingdom because of the cell wall. But the problem was, <laughs> they can't make their own food. And they're not, oh, they're, they're red, they're, they're pretty, they're some pretty ones. But we decided later on that there's enough differences in fungus to give them their own kingdom. So that's why we have kingdom fungi. Now, oh, I, I something here, I almost didn't put it on there, but I figured, well, you need to know sooner or later about it. Plants have a, a life form which is haploid and a life form which is diploid. And they, some, half their life they're haploid, half their life they're diploid. And when I show you some life cycles like for the moss and the fern, you're going to see that, oh, that, that green thing you see that you call a fern? That's the saprophyte. And you have different life cycles. And it, it, see, it makes the spores. The spores make a little heart-shaped prothallus, which is diploid. And around the heart up here is antheridia, which is equal to a man's testis. And down at the point, there's archegonia, equal to a lady's ovary, from the same plant. And these sperm, we call it sperm, they don't swim to their own, they swim to another prothallus and they fertilize those. And then from that grows what you call a fern. 
If you ever get a little fern, look at the bottom of it, and you're going to see the heart shape from thallus that that is growing from. What comes up is diploid. That heart shaped phallus is haploid because you're making these haploids. And we call that alternation of generations. All plants. Even the pine tree does it. But the pine tree you see out there, that's the sporophyte. Inside the pine cone is all you can ever see of the gametophyte. The little, the little cells. We don't do that. Animals don't do that. We're always, we're always diploid. And we make haploid cells to make more diploid. Plants don't do it. It's pretty cool. But I threw it on there to let you know that there is, there is a alternation generations that they have that we don't. Um, oh, the embryo always stays in the female sex organ. And usually we call it a fruit. If, 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 you have your, if you have a plum bush and the flowers come out and they're blooming so pretty and then it frosts and the flowers fall off, well, there goes your plums. Those flowers will change into the fruit, which is the plum. So if you're going to have any kind of fruit, you got to be sure that you don't let the flowers be them by the frost. <laughs> um, fungi, there's, there's nowhere near as many as there are of, of plants. They're all heterotrophs, no athlete's foot. Eating, your, eating yourself. Um, hard to kill them, didn't um, They can both be single cell, like the leaves that you cannot even see. They can be huge, like mushrooms. Okay. Usually they're, they're big enough. I know yeast are not, but usually you, you can see various types of them, mushrooms. Um, they have nuclei. They do not move around. And they don't make their own food. Have you ever seen a mushroom, uh, like a fairy circle? Yeah. I have one in my yard. I fight all the time. Because uh, uh, just a little while ago, and I, I took a golf club and I just knocked them all over the yard. And they don't drop their spores. Now, when he first comes up, he's like a little knot, right? And then he spreads out. If you get him like this, you can nip him. When he spreads, and all those spores fall off, and you can have more mushrooms next year. So I go out there and I kick them all over my yard. I mean, I got my prosthesis swinging around, and my wife, what are you doing? I'm trying to kill this fairy ring here. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you look underground there, you're going to see all this, it's called mycelium, all this spaghetti looking things going around in a circle. Actually, it starts here. And the next year, you got this ring. Next year, that ring. And right now, my ring is pretty big. It's been there for a while. But now, I'm down to only, only half comes back. So I'm winning the war. I take a few more battles. But, you know. I just don't like the way the thing looks in my pretty green grass. Those white things sticking up ugly. Animals, well, oh, they're about a million members. There's nothing. I mean, all the other kingdoms together ain't a million. So animal kingdom has, you know a sponge? is an animal. You know a jellyfish, right? A sponge is an animal. As a matter of fact, it is, it is the simplest of all animals, a sponge that you see growing in the ocean, stuck to a rock. Okay? Uh, plants never... Okay. Largest kingdom of all, million members, they're all multi, they're all eukaryotic. They can move around, that's why they're in the kingdom. They can go from point A to point B. Um, they must eat other things because they can't make their own things. They're the heterotrophs. But these do not eat dead things. They eat things that they killed, like we do, or like a snake does. Now, a coyote will eat about eight. 
What y'all do? One skills team. Huh? One skills team. All right. That's thanks Very good. Teaching. We miss you, sir. Okay. Oh, I wish y'all did. <laughs> I can't remember that friend. <laughs> Better be liked and disliked, I guess. I know. Okay. Um, like now, this, now you don't find now. I know a buzzer eats something dead, right? But here's what I mean. Fungi, they're also heterotrophs, but they are sapro. They actually eat things that are dead and break it down. That fungus growing on that on that dead tree stump, he is dissolving that tree stump. And the fungus that grows in your foot is described, described as eating your dead cells, breaking them down. It stinks. When I got gangrene, that was a bacterium set in that was eating my dead leg for dinner and making poisons and put them in my bloodstream. What you if they stayed in my leg, I'd been all right. But the blood brought them where? Back to me. And that's why gangrene kills. So either the solution, well, they had to take the leg off. I mean, that's, that's a harsh solution, but that's all they could do. So the leg came off because it had been, I'd been killed by the gangrene. Um, I just named, uh, oh, there's one thing to go, uh, should be able to on that word. All right, um, uh, mammals, birds, reptiles, frogs, things that you recognize as animals or in the kingdom. But I mentioned sponges because a lot of folks don't, a lot of folks think a sponge is kind of like a fungus. It's an animal. In every right, of the way it's an animal. Jellyfish, as you know, you might know those animals. They, they swim around. And will they attack you or you got to brush into them? Well, if you stand by one, you will he come to you? No. 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 You the current might blow them. No. They don't attack you. Most often, you blunder into them. And they don't ignore you, though. If you blunder into them, you're going to feel a burning sensation better. Um, animals never have anything. They have no cell walls. They have no chlorophyll, carotene, things like that. They can't make my food. Now, the zygote, when, when, when the sperm finds the egg, that's called a zygote. That's the first of the brand new baby. It is diploid. Now, the zygote starts to develop. At first it's solid. It keeps going and makes a hollow mass like a basketball. The inside there is hollow. And as it develops, it's going to fold back under the cell and start to lay down body cavities. Well, when you're around like a basketball because you have so many cells, then you're called a blastula. Now, when you first start, you got to but, but a mass of cells. But as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, they're going to take on a hollow appearance. So that there's cells outside and nothing inside. But that's your blastula. All animals do the blastula. Nothing else done of that but them. Even when you have this, this apple being produced, and the pollen from one tree lands on the flower of another tree and fertilizes it, and there's a zygote. But from that point on, though, the whole development is different. Because you're going to find that the cotyledons, whether it's monocot or dicot, the little leaves, when that seed is put in the ground and it knows up and down, and out comes the trigonum and goes downward. That's going to be the root. It's going to go with gravity. You can put it upside down, it's still coming out and go down. When you, when, you, when you plant seeds, you don't make sure they're right. You just throw them in there right. Gravity is the rest of it. The stem fights gravity and grows up out of it. We wondered, and I don't know, if you take, if you take a seed to, into space, or no gravity, will you find the roots all growing around the stems too? Because they can't grow down. 
And they can't. I don't know. I wonder about that. I know we're going to try to have, we want to have a colony on the moon where we live there. Now, the moon has gravity, though. Not much, but it's got gravity. About one sixth of ours. That might be enough to, in an artificial environment to make the thing grow correctly. But, um, you know, and that blastula in the end would become, you know, a baby of getting her father, a calf, or a puppy. Or... I was trying, what, what, what do you call a baby kangaroo? A jewel? Mm -hmm. I thought, I, I was going to use, I didn't want to put it where I didn't know, but I, I don't know how we get these names of babies. Fawn, we know, is a deer. Puppy, we know, is a dog. Joey, I thought that was Joey for a kangaroo. Y'all know, y'all know nicknames for animals? Oh, a bear, what's a bear dog? That's a cub. A kid. Didn't they call a cub but a bear? Puppy, only a dog is a puppy. It's a lion. A lion. Oh, okay, lions have, okay, lion cub, so that would be a problem. That because if I say, I have a cub at home, you'd be going, what kind of cub? I have a joey at home, you might go, you got a kangaroo, if you knew about joeys. I was trying to think of other nicknames, and I thought about joey, but I didn't, want to, I didn't put it, I didn't research it either. But anyway, those, now, if you keep going though, this is the new arrangement now. Now, if you look at this one right here, that's just five, right? And you look at this one down here, well, what are they, what are they really done? But what, but what's the difference about it? What, what's the new development? They divided it into what? Prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Well, I told you all up here, but would you have known that when looking at this one? Would you would you have known prokaryote and eukaryote? Yeah. You might, but uh, a person that didn't know this would not know. They would think they're all equal. But this one, I kind of like it because it tells you that there's one kind, which are prokaryotes, and there's four kinds, which are... But the problem is, though, I always thought kingdom was the highest order. Hey, well, I gotta think something about that. I know two things. I've seen domain. I've seen empire. So both those words are rank. You know, you got a lieutenant and you got the general. Here's your lieutenant and here's your general. And you may have a president later on who will all of them. But I don't. I don't see much advancement here over the other one, except for you kind of let know prokaryotes, eukaryotes. The six kingdom scheme, though, is a little bit different. A guy named Walsh, and we're talking, we're talking in the mid '70s, and I was, I was just out of college, and um, I heard this stuff, but I wasn't sure what they were talking about. But when you're living on the cutting edge, you get locked behind sometimes. Now I look back, I go, that's what they meant. Now I look back 30 years later. Well, this guy came along, and he said, um, he wants to do it this way. He wants to give us three domains and six kingdoms. Nothing changed here. Nothing changed there. Nothing there. And actually nothing there except for to use that word. There's your change. Because this used to be kingdom what? And then this guy Woe said, there's some bacteria that can live in places you would never think like we go to the moon we're looking for that kind of weird bacteria to live in the hot springs you're a very unusual character that was all the boring and they lived there to live in the salt lake very unusual so what this dude gets he said let's take these bacteria and divide them these are your regular bacteria and these are the oddballs that live in the Salt Lake, that I live in boiling water. Even in the ocean down where the volcanic vents are and water is steam coming up, they live there. You won't find sharks living there. You won't find coral living there. They can't stand the heat. But these, if, to, tell one, to tell somebody that, that that's an archaic idea, are you being good or bad to them? Bad. Bad. Archaic means caveman. It's so stupid. Archaic biology 
RK bacteria actually refers to bacteria that had to been present back in the very beginning when the body, because they lived and they kept on living. So we think these probably gave rise to those. Because if these were killed by hot springs, how would they make those? You couldn't have it. So now if you live in a hot spring, you reckon you live in my in my fly in, in my in my bird bath? Yeah. Now, if you were if you live in my bird bath and you can you think you could also live in probably a hot spring? Probably not. So we're thinking that these archaeobacteria, these ones that can live in the awful, awful, awful environments, they got in rain and they got rained on to, to the trees and, and they start growing there too. And they gave rise to the other kind of bacteria. So we think this probably is the oldest life forms around. And we go to the moon, we're looking for these. Those are and the same uh, ones that are on the plants. Huh? On the surfaces of plants too? Mm -hmm. So, that's the sixth kingdom, and what you're going to give me, there's nothing here to work out, but you're going to give me this. Next door, I have the, the scope set up, and I think I turned it off. Um, if you're going to focus, Lord, don't do the big knot. It is that far from the, from the microscope slide, used to small knobs. And I got to focus for my, for my glasses on I usually find them like this, and then I finish like that for y'all. So when you walk in there and you can't quite see them, just use them, and don't take much time now. Now the scope I'm using, I have found that when I change it, I only got to come up to find my new focus. That's just the nature of the scope. So when you go in there, it might be perfect because my eyes are pretty good. My, now, my glasses off, you probably find blurred. I get up to my eyes, and I... I, oh, I tweaked it a little bit. So, I only, I only, I, I'm going to order more slides. So this is the most unusual thing. And I want you to draw a picture right in here. Of what you see now. My PowerPoint had no picture of what you're about to see. Also, I want you to record the magnification. Remember how you do it? <laughs> that times that. Okay, we'll record that. And um, I got some questions. This you probably get by digging off the internet, finding more about it. Uh, both organisms of alike can benefit from their. When both of them benefit, there's a name for that. Symbiotic. Okay. Now, when you figure out what two things are there, I want to know how they're being hit by the other. You might say, well, one of them is a flugel, and he is benefiting from the other one, a trap mire. Because the trap mire gives him this, that, and the other. I want to know what they're getting out of the relationship. I mean, they're both benefiting in one way street. They're both gaining from it. So, and that when you get done, that's why I want to turn in. I don't mean today, because you might do the research here. I want to turn in next time I see you, which is a week away, right? But we're not here next week. No, we're here to follow you. going to be on the come back 15th. On that, next, on that next Wednesday. Give me this thing. I won't One five. <laughs> um, and you can't email because you got to draw it. Unless you got a scanner, but don't be like control. Just when you come back to school on Wednesday, give it to me then. I'll go home and put it on the calendar so it kind of reminds you of it. So right now, you may walk in there and just turn. It's just first come, first serve, and quickly sketch what you see. It, uh, you don't see a whole lot. It won't, it, it, sketching be easy. <laughs> and be sure that you tell me the mag. Now, I was frankly amazed that that scope would do that. I didn't think it would do it. And I go, oh man, this is now my favorite scope. And that's what you So I'm going to take, the, I've, got, I've got to shut down in here and join you in there. That door is probably unlocked. I came out that door. So move in there and one at a time, you got your camera, take